Kathy. Good morning, Kathy Peg. Nolan, and thank you for coming to share your story with us. What we could begin with is your beginnings. Can you tell us where you grew up and your folks and something about your family and your schooling? Well, I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and um, I was the fourth of nine children. My mom and dad um, uh, both were longtime Minneapolis residents, although my mother was born in Fort Dodge, Iowa. Or wherever that is. Wherever <laughs> that is. Pat would know. Yeah, yeah. And my dad was born in Virginia, Minnesota, which is up in the mining area uh -huh. of Minnesota, up north, I guess it is. I've never been there, so. Um, my, his mother came from Chicago, actually the south side of Chicago, oh dear. back of the yards. Uh -huh. And my mother's family were Iowans. Her, um, her family were Presbyterian. And uh, my grandmother converted when she married my oh. grandfather. Mm -hmm. So um, let's see what else. I, uh, we lived in Minnesota until I was about nine years old. And then my dad and my uncle, who had a construction business together, moved, to, moved the business to Florida. Oh, that's how you got to Florida. I was right. waiting to hear that. Yeah. yeah. So oh. we moved to Fort Lauderdale, Florida. And um, I attended. And that was around what? That was about 1956, I think. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So um, we were in, in Fort Lauderdale back then. There was still only one Catholic parish, St. Anthony's. No. St. Anthony's. Just after I, we came. With Monsignor uh, O'Looney? Monsignor O'Looney. Actually, okay. he started um, St. Clement's he, right. and St. Sebastian, yes. St. Pius, all of those parishes. Mm -hmm. He really got wow. started. So St. Clement's was probably just getting started. Mm -hmm. um, but um, but St. Anthony's was the parish. The parish in yeah, Fort Lauderdale. Yeah, yeah. And of course, I think back then, when I first went to uh, Fort Lauderdale, our sisters were still commuting out to St. St. Thomas, which was Central Catholic when I was first From, there. They all lived at St. Anthony's. They all lived at St. Anthony's, Anthony's. And there was a... Um, uh, a station wagon, and you'd see the nuns piled in and driving out to Saint, to Central Catholic, which right. later became Saint Thomas. Okay, so you went to grade school to Saint Anthony's, right, right. and high school to Saint Thomas. Right. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Was that the place we called the East and West Side? <laughs> no, we won't. We, won't, yeah, we don't go we, there. We won't go, we'll there. go there. All yeah. right. Now you had. Uh, there's nine kids, so four right. of you were born up in. Well, no, everybody was born in Minneapolis. Oh, everyone. Except okay. for the youngest, yeah. and she was born in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, but I when see. we moved to um, uh, Fort Lauderdale, my brother Ricky, the youngest at that time, he was about mm, a couple of months old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, he would, no, he would have been older than that. He, he, but he wasn't a year old yet. Right, okay. Yeah. So my dad drove the four oldest in the car. And my mother took the four youngest on a plane. Oh dear! <laughs> my sister, oh. my sister Patty, uh -huh. who was the oldest yeah. of the four youngest, yeah. she talks about that trip. In <laughs> <laughs> she still remembers. Right. Very memorable. Uh, very memorable. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Back in those days. <laughs> yeah. Good, good for you. Oh, mother. right, right, right. Yeah. So then your dad, you know, was employed down there. Right. He and you. my uncle had yeah. this construction yeah. company that they, uh, um, they were roads construction. Oh, okay, not houses or anything. No, like no, roads Still hot work. Hot yes, work. Hot work, work, yeah. Right, and they, um, the, their, their work was up in North Florida. Okay, um, okay. Yeah. So they traveled? Well, they traveled. My dad would take the train back and forth, and he would come home on weekends. Oh, my gosh. But that, we were used to that because in the yeah. road business, that's what happened. That's what happened. So he uh -huh. worked all summer, uh -huh. and then in the winter, he, there, you know, they, they uh -huh. couldn't do road construction. Okay, so then you went to school to St. Anthony's, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. kindergarten through eighth grade? No. I, I, uh, the first year that we were in Florida, several of us, my brother, Pete, and myself, 
had to go to public school because St. Anthony's didn't have room. So I started, about? right, I started St. Anthony's in fifth grade. Oh, interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And was there someone there? Was there a sister there that you just thought Oh, was well, there were. They were all nuns, probably. Just about. Yeah. Every, every grade had a sister. It may be, there were two grades of each. Yeah. And then there was lay teachers. Yeah. Yeah. But, um... I'm trying to think. Sister Ann Terrence was yes, the principal, yes. and she was Martha just Jim. wonderful. Yes, yes. She was great. Great, great woman. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes. Everybody loved her. Mm -hmm. Who was your teachers? Um, with nuns. Um, Sister Eugenia. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Little Eugenia. Yeah. And Sister Veronica. Oh, gosh. Wonderful. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, Sister... Michael Elise, who now yes. is Elisa Doherty, yeah. and uh, Sister Ramondi, which was she, Maria Riley. Marie, right. No, Marie Riley. Yeah. So those yeah. were the, the teachers that I... Okay. And so then you, I had lay teachers, so too. So you had... Now, when, when did you kind of get this sense of wanting to be a nun? Well, Sister Veronica, she had this vocation club at St. Anthony's. Interesting. Yeah. So Tell another, the people in formation <laughs> they need to have a vocation. Club. Right. So uh, I was in the vocation club, and that was you know we read books and she talked to us about vocation. And, um, just any vocation, or was it specific? No, it was religious like, life. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Yeah, yeah. So there were probably, oh, I don't know, quite a few girls that joined this club. It was just girls. Uh huh. Okay. Yeah. That's an interesting Yeah, concept. yeah. So yeah. anyway, so that's when I first kind of started thinking about it. But then when I went to high school, I really didn't pay much attention until I got to be a senior. And then I oh. started thinking about it again. Uh -huh. And then I went and talked to Veronica. And so did Veronica still, was she still in the she grade school? She was still there. Okay, yeah. but this was the high school. Right, right. So um, she was my connection, really. Yeah. So, so the other nuns kind of modeled for you. What yeah. you wanted to be or oh, didn't want to be? Well, I never gave it much thought. I, the yeah. only person that I really looked to was Sister, you know, Veronica. Veronica. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, and it was interesting. Um, there was a young sister at St. Anthony's, and when we were, she wanted to introduce me to this young sister. Her name was Susan, Sister Susan Emmett. Yes, yes. So I met her just briefly. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it didn't make much, I mean, she was right. beautiful yes. and everything. But then when I went to St. Jude's, that was my second mission, She, we were missioned there together. Okay. And, and that's when I made the connection. And as it turns out... <laughs> she was your home visit companion? <laughs> yeah. She, well, she was, yeah, sort of. Anyway, <coughs> she, uh, she and my brother got to know each other. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you know the rest of right, the story. Right, and so now they enjoy <laughs> yeah. uh, four kids. Right. And, yeah. and I think they have about 10 or 11 grandchildren oh, now. Oh my, yes, yeah. she was a wonderful person. Yeah. yeah. I lived with her for yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Right, yeah. so anyway, that was, but it uh -huh. was uh, interesting. I didn't make that connection until uh -huh. much later. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, all right, so then you entered when? In 1964, oh, okay. right after high school. Okay. Yeah. All right. So you went right in. You came here. Mm -hmm. I came and, here in uh, September, September 8th. And a few of you entered at that time? Oh, there were, yes, a few of us, like 124. <gasps> See, those vocation clubs are important. They, they worked. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. 120. 124. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Great crowd. Uh-huh. Okay, you got to know each other very closely. We got to know each other well. And, yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, it was a sister, uh, Ruth Steiner, right, and Rosemary. Those yeah. were the our miss. So Rosemary was character. your novice. She was the assistant postulant mistress. Oh, okay. Yeah. She, okay. So she assisted Ruth. Okay. Okay. I thought it was the other way around. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So then you made profession, mm -hmm. and what about other some ministerial experiences that were life-changing uh, events for you? I know you can't get into all of them. Right, but. right. Well, I would say um, my first um, mission was Nassau, Bahamas. 
Oh. And I would say that was life-changing. Um, there was a, a Scarborough father there who was the pastor of St. Thomas More Parish. Mm -hmm. And I was at the school there with uh, our sister Therese Wash and right. uh, Sister Mary Rose Hulkenittle was yeah, the right? principal. Uh -huh. but anyway, we would uh, go in, now Father McKernan was his name, and he had been in China and he had been in a concentration camp. He was oh. caught in the revolution. And this man was just, um, he was an inspiration. He had such a, a, just such a sense of missionary spirit. And he, um, in telling his stories, he was really teaching Teresa and myself about being missionaries, being in a foreign country. Wow. And, one of the things he had us do was take census of the parish so that we would get to know who our parishioners were. And it was, um, it was a, a very diverse parish. There was extreme poverty mm -hmm. and wealth all mm -hmm. around us. The, the story that, that uh, kind of um, just kind of uh, made me aware uh, one more Sunday morning, I, we got the paper, and there had been a fire just maybe a half a block down the street from us. And this, this house had burned to the ground. And the thing that stuck out in my mind was, they said the, the, uh, the, the loss was the equivalent of $200. Oh my. oh my. And that was just a few doors down from where we lived. Equivalent to $200. Yeah. So, I mean, those were the kinds of things that just, um, just... So that, that life-changing event kind right. of sparked some energy of peace and justice within you, I'm sure, I which think it did. brings you to where you are now. Right. But is there another... Well, yeah. then I lived with Sister Jean Hughes oh. yeah. for many years in Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. And I would say that she was the person that helped me to... to you know, really put all of that together in terms of a worldview and a sense of um, mm -hmm. um, peace and justice and working mm -hmm. with, she had such a great um, way of including everybody and making everyone feel important. And uh, when she was at Aquinas, freeing the students to, um, to act for, on their own behalf mm -hmm. and things like that. She, so I live with her and Mary Fran, and so living with them and their experience. Mary Fran Coleman, so our, so our right? Viewers, so. Uh, th they were always talking about their experience on, down in the islands, and of course, That's Jean's. Right. Oh my word! Jean's ex uh -huh. Jean's life changing experience was the village movie, and being there and having the people root for the Indians rather than the cowboys. Whereas in our country. We always rooted for the cavalry when they came in to rescue. Got it, got it. Got yeah, it. so that was her aha moment. Uh huh, uh huh. So you got some, you lived with some great uh, oh, women. Yes, uh, yes. In your yeah. which have helped you. So is there another ministry that? Well, I think working at Grace House in Chicago. Okay, maybe you can explain to us what Grace okay. House is. Okay. Well, Grace House is a a. a Residence Grace House was uh, established or founded by Bob Doherty, Sister Grace Doherty's brother, and he um, he would have been working with uh, men coming out of prisons in Illinois, and at St. Leonard's, which was for men, and he decided that there needed to be something for women, so he founded Grace House, named it after his mother. And uh, so at Grace House, then, we welcomed women coming out of the Illinois state prisons. And the whole purpose and focus and goal was to, st you know, really stop the recidivism. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, women and men returned to prison at about a rate of 65 percent. Um, so at Grace House in St. Leonard's, the, the recidivism, recidivism rate has been consistently 18 to 20 percent. Wow. So uh -huh. um, 
So I worked, I was the, the social worker counselor for the women at Grace House. And I felt... Did you have to interview, did you have to go to the jail or the prison wherever the women came from and interview them in some way to see if they were appropriate? Or no, oh. I didn't do that. There was another person oh. who, who did that. At Grace House. So yeah. yeah. Okay, I was wondering how they right. got there. Um, well, most of the women, once we got up and running, the women self-referred. So they oh. would start writing us because oh. they heard about it and they heard how wonderful it was and they wanted to come. And so they, uh, so we didn't have really a lot of difficulty yeah. um, getting women at mm -hmm. Grace House. The hardest part really was when they were released from prison, they were probably about 100 miles away. Most of the women came from um, Dixon, Illinois, there was a prison down there for women. And they would either get on the train or the bus. So the hardest part was the, that 100 miles to get from there, Dixon, to Grace House. What do you mean it was the hardest well, part? Well, because on the way, well, most of these women were, were, had drug problems. And although they have been drug-free while in prison, oh. they hadn't been involved in treatment. And so they still were, for the most part, um, active. That's an interesting uh, comment. Uh -huh. They were drug free, but they hadn't been involved right. in treatment. So they were still active right. addicts. Right. Right. And so just being able to get. Uh -huh. And they had to arrive at Grace House drug free. Oh, and some of them. Well, some of them never came. And then a few came, but couldn't. we had to refer them right into drug treatment if they wanted to do that. So that was that was the. And first. they had to do that in order to stay at Grace right, House, right? Because we were no one could be. And who paid for that? Well, there were um, there were drug programs okay. where they okay. could go and um, and they would be um, they were run by the uh, nonprofits anyway. They okay. didn't have to pay a fee. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So, so that was the first hurdle, and you can imagine if you were able to jump that hurdle. Yeah. Then pretty you, good. yeah, that was that was a real strong mm -hmm. indication that you may be able to have some success. So the first thing when the women came was to connect them with drug treatment, and then we did the counseling, and then we started with um, skill building, um, either GED or programs where they would be able to learn skills. Wonderful. Yeah. Wonderful. Is Grace House still in existence? Yes. Oh, yes. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Taken over by different leadership. And well, it's still but... under the Grace House in St. Leonard, St. Leonard Ministries, yeah. is under the auspices of the Episcopal Charities. Okay. Now, the, the administration and the people there are, of course, all different. At one point, there were eight Adrian Dominicans right, there. Yeah. And now, uh, Eunice Draspa is still there as uh, she's doing archival work. So she goes Great. in a uh -huh. couple of days a week, I guess. And, uh -huh. and so she's uh -huh. still connected. But um, Bob Doherty has uh, moved on and um, so I've, it's... What a great ministry, what a great ministry. Yes, well, and I'll tell you what, um, and Jean, was, Jean Hughes was a very uh, important part of this, was the alternative high school. The, the, the GED program is not really geared for adult learners. And we never had anyone be successful uh -huh. in achieving uh -huh. a GED. But with the help of Rennie Golden, a former right, Adrian right, Dominican, right. we were able to uh, create the Alternative High School, which is now Sister Jean Hughes Alternative High School. And through that program, we have been able to achieve a, a, enormous um, gains for the men and women. To have a high school diploma is a springboard to uh, all kinds of mm -hmm. um, opportunities. And Regina Dominican High School uh, has given the gift of sponsoring the diploma. Oh. So we, we should be, Adrian Dominicans, we should be very proud of that because 
that gift of education is priceless. So they go to this alternative school mm -hmm. and then they graduate from from well, they graduate from the Sister Jean Hughes Alternative High School, right. but the diploma is sponsored by Regina Dominican. Okay. Okay, I don't think I ever knew that. Yeah, so it's a high school diploma. diploma right. Which, Instead of a GED, right, which, which has, is a lot more value. Right, more prestige. I never knew that. Yeah. That's yeah. great. But yeah. you know what? It's people with creativity and determination and our women that were there uh -huh. and like yourself, it's just unbelievable. And then you know when you have to let go and move on. Right. So right. that was a great yeah. experience. So yeah. where did you move on to? Well, I took a sabbatical and I spent my sabbatical at Eighth Day Center for Justice in Chicago. And I worked with uh, the Eighth Day. I got involved with the, um, they had, they were very active in the um, SOA School of the yes. Americas yeah. and they were, um, uh, working with the national um, organization as well as they had an Illinois working group which was very active. So that was one of my main um, uh, activities during that year of sabbatical. And then I also took some courses at uh, Chicago Theological Union. They had a sabbatical program and so I took courses there. But then at the, um, that was in, uh, let's see, 2004, uh, February that year, 2000. Oh, let's not go there yet. Okay. okay. So you um, you did that sabbatical work. Did you ever have any fun on your sabbatical? Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. So you did go do some resting, or whatever. Well, I just, you rested. I rested. You I just, rested and work in peace and justice. Work. Right. Yeah. Well, I just had a good time. It good. was very relaxing. I didn't have to. Great responsibility. Right. I could um, have on some days have leisurely mornings and good. Good. things like that. Good. Yeah. Good. Okay, so then in February of 2000, was it fourth, did Four, we say? Yeah. Your life changed. My life changed. So did all of our lives change. <laughs> right. <laughs> what happened? Well, we had our general chapter yeah. in 2004, and I was elected to the general right. council. Right. Uh, so that was for six years. Yeah. So that occupied my <laughs> life. For, no resting or relaxing there. Right. That's 24-7. Yeah. In, indeed. It is, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah. wonderful. I mean, it was, it's a wonderful experience. Yeah. But it is, it is, it know, is. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so I was on the council. I had, uh, I was with Donna Markham, who was our prioress, and Rosa Monique, Mary Kay Holm, and Judy Wim Rimby. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, is that a name? That, that's right. Yeah. And myself. myself. Yeah. 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 So it was. It was a very grace time. I mean, it was such a gift to be able to serve him. In leadership and leadership and to be of service to our women right it's right. I think you have to experience to realize it is just mm -hmm. it is an honor and right, a privilege right. and a tremendous responsibility right. but you know the one thing I think that I came away with is how we are how we need each other mm -hmm. and how we have to hold each other so reverently and sacredly because nice. we need each other mm -hmm. We can't do it. No, it's not one person. No, we it's need together. each other. Yeah. So, to, uh, so I came away with such an appreciation, I think, of of uh, all of us together. Okay. So, what next? Well, well another significant. Not can't name. Oh, all okay. Of, yeah. um, well, then I went to um, during the time that I was on the council, we initiated the congregation initiatives, and one of those places that we um, sent had sisters. Mm -hmm go-to was Prince George, British Columbia. That's right. right. That's right. So I, I went there. Okay. I kind of traded places with Terry, yeah. Terry Ann, uh, which was a wonderful experience. I because know you liked it. Yeah, yeah. it was for, just in terms of nature and beauty. Mm -hmm. British Columbia is spectacular in beauty. Um, but the people, I, there, I, the people there, I, I worked with a number of um, adults who were the core of the church in British Columbia, in, in Prince George, they had been what they called frontier apostles. In the 60s, a bishop, Bishop O'Grady, had recruited young people from all over Europe, predominantly Ireland, but, um, but from all over Europe and even some from the United States. Uh -huh. It was like a, a Peace Corps kind of thing. And he would bring them into the diocese of Prince George. They would um, run the schools. Um, wow. and work in all kinds of uh, parish uh -huh. ministry. Uh -huh. And many of these people 
remained in Prince George. And they, these folks now in their 50s, 60s, 70s, really were the core of that church, mm -hmm. still working mm -hmm. for, um, in, in uh, mm -hmm. the parish work. So just getting to know some of those people, I mean, they were just uh, tremendous, wonderful people. And then another opportunity was uh, getting to know a little bit the, um, the indigenous community. Right, up there. Mm -hmm. so, so those, those were a couple of the, of the experiences that made Prince George really special. And mm -hmm. the bishop who uh, we worked with, mm -hmm. Bishop um, Jerry Wiesner, was just a wonderful man. Yeah, you all have spoken yeah. highly of him. Yeah. And uh, that was your initiative. Right. Um, right now, how do you spend your unscheduled time? You're yeah. away from work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, I enjoy going to movies. Uh huh. And um, being with friends. Being you, with you, you friends, just, yeah. yeah. Being with friends. And uh, I have a bicycle that I like to ride. I haven't been able to get on that recently, but yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm looking forward to getting back well, on my bike. Well, it's the heat and other things that right. keep you from doing that. Right, exactly. How would you like to be remembered? Ooh. Kathy Nolan. I guess a, a woman who dedicated to our community to, um, I, I, you know, you hear that word community woman. I hope I'm yes, a community yes. woman. That's a tremendous um, honor, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I guess that would be a person, I hope that I am a person who um, shows compassion mm -hmm. and um, awareness and love Beautiful. for mm -hmm. the gospel. Mm -hmm. Is there, <coughs> excuse me, something about you that we don't know that we'd be totally surprised at? Mm. If we knew? If you knew. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if this is such a, when I was at St. Anthony's, um, I got to know uh, Chris Everett. I babysat for her and for her family, so. Um, I feel like uh, maybe I had some <laughs> positive influence on Chris Everett, I don't know. Do you play tennis? I did play tennis. <laughs> oh, you did. Yes, her father taught me how to play tennis. He was a wonderful guy. Yes. He had this Saturday morning tennis clinic, uh -huh. and hundreds of kids would come out there, and he would line mm -hmm. us all up at, at, let's see, at the back at the end of the court, in the middle, and at the net. And then the, you had the same thing going on the other side. And everybody had a particular uh, thing that they did. Uh -huh. And it was the way that we all learned how to play tennis. And out of that, a number of people went on to become champions, <gasps> including his own daughter. Right, right. Yeah. So he, he yeah. was quite a... Um, uh, Inspi uh, yeah, right. inspiration. Well, yeah. isn't that interesting? Yeah. Look at the vocation club right. and the tennis club. Right. Gathering people together and giving your extra. That's awesome. It That's is. That's great. It is. Yeah. 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 The power of yeah, bringing people, people together. Yeah, but you need yeah. someone to start it. Uh, right. That's uh, right. another thing that right. you had. And Fort Lauderdale had this mm -hmm. wonderful park system, and so they hired him uh -huh. to run the tennis courts, uh -huh. the tennis park. Yeah. Oh, Kathy, is there anything else that, that maybe we didn't touch on that you would be important for us to know about you or about what you are about well, at this time? You're in the Peace and Justice right, Office. Right, right. And what does that mean? Well, I hope that it means that um, I facilitate every, uh, all of our sisters' associates, first and you know, foremost, that's to, um, to engage in our agenda for peace and justice. My feeling is that we all can do something. And that's, that's what we should be all doing something. Right, and that, that's a good way to, to sum this up because you are, you are a community woman. And you do send us stuff out every single day. And I think what I appreciate, you don't feel as though it's you know, being pushed at us. Uh -huh. You have sent us information and invite us to participate. And I think for me, I know, that's a great way to get me involved, you know. Don't say uh -huh. we, uh -huh. but uh, you model 
uh, you practice what you preach, I think is what I say. You really do preach to all of us. You are a community woman. You are a woman with passion for peace and justice. And I just think it comes very much a part of you. So we are truly blessed that you are uh, in that office and you continue to keep before us the issues of the day and where we can put our energies, even if it's a phone call. A phone call is so important, yeah. or one of those cards. But you have been very instrumental in keeping us aware of peace and justice. So I, in the name of the congregation, I thank you, oh, thank you for being the person you are and how you have engaged all of us. Thank so you, God Pat. bless you as you oh. continue. Thank you for saying that.